did was I had to replace the entire center console and the the lid here because they were all completely messed up and the only way you can fix them up is to get them completely replaced and that's kind of expensive but once done it works well okay so so on to uh, the second the next major problem I noticed when I bought the car was that the radio did not work I mean, the only thing you could see was the clock was working but you know you couldn't turn the radio on it didn't do anything so I had to go and figure out what was wrong or replace this with an aftermarket unit so I was gonna go replace this with an Android uh, aftermarket unit but uh, by the time I figured out what was actually wrong I figured I would just put the stock unit back in because if I used an Android I would have had to do some additional cutting and try to figure out how to mount this thing into there so it was just uh, a lot easier just to keep the stock radio which actually works pretty well so the problem with the radio was that uh, behind me in the trunk there is a bunch of relays and uh, in each one of these speakers here uh, these are have their own amplifier in it so to each of these speakers goes 12 volts and then there is a low a low amplitude like an RCA type signal a low line level signal that goes to each of these speakers so uh, normally the your your receiver sends out you know it's like it's got a 40 watt receiver will send 40 watts from the receiver to the speakers but in this case your receiver sends out like you know milliwatts in a very low signal to your speakers which are amplified and uh, on, on these cars there's a relay back there and when you turn on the radio that relay supplies the 12 volts to those speakers but what happened is that that relay didn't work uh, the power to the relay was uh, was not sufficient there was some kind of break so that when this turned on it just didn't have enough juice to turn on and keep that relay on so I had to basically hot wire one of the wires from the harness uh, to directly supply that signal and uh, there was another problem uh, that also the uh, the main 12 volt bus to that relay just wasn't working either so I also had to uh, take a 12 volt power source off of like one of the one of the uh, back you know not a hood light but um, the trunk light and uh, wire it directly to the radio so once I fixed those two connections uh, that brought the factory radio back to life so but the factory radio is pretty nice uh, it does have some special features uh, particularly they have this SCV control which means that when the car is driving faster uh, the radio will get louder so you don't have to make the radio louder or less or more than uh, when you're driving around the car uh, however uh, I do want to have all the advantages of say the Android radio which is to integrate with my phone so what I have here is I have this is a Bluetooth transmitter and this is a handy little unit here and uh, I just put my, all my music on an SD card so right there everything I've got is in there however in order to use this um, I needed to add a new 12 volt outlet which is only on when the car is on now the car does come with its own 12 volt outlet underneath this plate here and I also had to replace this this was uh, missing and not working on my car so I put that in but this is hot all the time so you can't plug in an accessory item like this because it will be on the whole time so you can't really use this cigarette lighter for stuff like that so that would be a con you can't not use that that is on all the time uh, so I but there is a wire in here which is designed for accessories 
that are turned on when the car is on. So I just took that wire and wired these two new 12 volt sockets here. So I just added two. So when my car comes on, uh, this will also turn on. And this allows me to connect to my cell phone. So when I'm playing uh, Bluetooth on my cell phone, it's received by this unit and plays through my sound system by setting the radio station. So this transmits to a radio station. I set one of my radio buttons to that station and uh, then I can hear everything that's on my phone. Now, of course, you also want to do stuff like navigation. So we do have this panel here and this panel is like your dummy light panel. And uh, if you're buying one of these cars and when you're driving around and you see this, anything other than completely black, uh, that's trouble. So any light that you see sh showing on here while your car is driving, it's probably at least $1,000 to get fixed. So uh, that's one thing to look out for. But uh, this, is, this is a handy place to actually stick your phone. What I did is I put some Velcro on the sides here. And on my case, I've got some Velcro on the side. So when I want to uh, use like GPS navigation, I just stick my phone right there. And uh, this particular Bluetooth transmitter also has a USB. So I can go ahead and charge my phone when it's there. And uh, I can uh, then get basically the same things I would get from like a full uh, Apple CarPlay situation except you know I just use the actual Apple phone right there so that's pretty handy okay some other things uh, so the seats here the 25 year old seats kind of worn here and uh, the seats had like a massive damage to the bolsters here I have another video where I show how I replaced how I fix the, fix the holes on the seats. And the other thing that I did is I uh, moved the passenger side to the driver's side and the driver's side to the passenger side. And that can be done, but you do have to unbolt everything. It actually uses a different bolt pattern uh, between the left and the right. But uh, the, sweet, the seats can be switched if you so desire. Or otherwise, you can buy uh, new seat covers for like thousand dollars if you want to do that okay so let's see here does that do everything for the interior oh here's one thing that I wanted to show you which is the parking brake okay now in order for use a parking brake uh, you have to pull it up and it clicks like that but uh, after you pull it up then you have to push it back down otherwise when you try and get out of the car your knee's going to knock into it. So uh, I'm not going to lie here. This is not something that you're going to get used to. So this is definitely a con, you know, the way the parking brake works. Um, I had to lubricate this to make it so I could actually even push it down because it was getting kind of stuck, but it should be fairly loose. But yeah, then you have to pull it up, pull it up even more, and then release the brake. And then that's how you get out. And there is a an indicator on the dash here, which shows you whether your brake is engaged or not. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate that. So it says park, pull up, pull down, and then the light goes out. But yeah, this is a pain uh, to have to deal with that. And uh, talking about getting out of the car, okay. Once again, I'm not gonna lie to you about this, is that Getting in and out of this car is difficult. Okay, now there's lots of videos, I think, of showing people how to get in and out of these cars. The key here is you're not supposed to ever touch or grab the steering wheel when you're getting out of the car. Because what you can do is that you keep on doing that, uh, you'll wreck the bearings in the steering wheel and then you're gonna have a big expensive repair job. So uh, while there are many ways of getting out of the car, I think you're just gonna have to try it yourself because you are sitting so low. Uh, basically, this is what I do. I take one foot, I put it down, plant it on the floor here. I use my other foot as kind of a push off. 
I take my shoulder and I put it on, on, the, on the bolster bit, but try not to press there too bad. And then I push out. There we go. That's how I get out. Then, like I said, there's other videos telling you how to get in and out. Um, when I get in, you know, I put one foot in, let my butt drop to the ground, and then stick my other leg in, and then close this ginormous door, which you have to slam pretty hard. And uh, your passengers, when they're getting in and out, will have a similar problem. So if you're a gentleman, uh, you'll make sure to go and open the door for the ladies and close it because it is a lot of, it's very difficult to get in and out of this car. Okay, so that's enough about the interior. All right, let's go. Uh, so one funny story was that as soon as I got my radio working completely, uh, then the antenna stopped working. It would just not come up. So I was like, oh, great. But all this time, weeks and weeks, I think it took me like three or four weeks to get the radio to work, just to have the antenna not come up. Okay, so, I, so you can just replace this mast. So I tried that. I ordered the mast. I pulled this old one in. I tried to shove the... Uh, the new mast and hoping that it would uh, catch it and it did but it would still like leave two inches it wouldn't go in the last two inches and i tried to shove it in there and i broke the new mast so because there's just some uh, old bits of the antenna stuck in there and it just isn't gonna allow it to suck it all the way down so uh, there are videos on how to replace that uh, the one i use means you take off the uh, license plate, you unscrew this uh, back tail light, and then you can feed the antenna motor through it. And then you can disassemble it, the antenna motor and take out the piece that was missing and get the, uh, put in the new antenna. All right, so, but uh, yeah, that's just one of those things that wears out after 25 years or so. So uh, you can also see that I added uh, chrome lettering here. And uh, over here you have your, your gas uh, tank access here. So uh, one of the advantages with Corvette is that it's right dead center. So you don't have to worry about being on the right hand side of the pump or the left hand side of the pump. Uh, you can go to any pump because you're right dead center. But because you put your gas like straight down this way, it's like really hard when you're done filling your gas not to get gas, you know, all over your car when you're pulling it out. So, and it's not spectacularly close, but uh, yeah, so that's a, both an advantage and a disadvantage with the car. Okay, and um, Another thing I wanted to mention was that the, the heating, the climate controls on this car um, aren't that powerful. 